Welcome back! Today we are talking about Goethe's Faust and we're looking at the scene Auerbach's Tavern in Leipzig. And just a quick apology, I'm not very good at pronouncing German names. Sorry to all of those German speakers out there. Auerbach's tavern scene stands in pretty striking contrast to what we've read of Faust so far. We've really changed things up here. In fact, up to this point, Faust has been mostly sitting in his own study, reflecting these long, introspective monologues with a little bit of dialogue with uh, Mephistopheles or with Wagner, his foil. But all of a sudden, we're in a bar with a bunch of drunks, and we're singing lots of tunes. There's a lot of magic and a lot of showiness in this particular scene, which makes it visually interesting and appealing, but not very grounded in the main ideas of Faust. The most interesting thing about this scene is the fact that it is Mephistopheles' first attempt to really win Faust over, and it's a horrible failure. Back in the last study scene, Faust was talking about how if only he could have that one moment of fulfillment, how he would just, that's all he wants out of life, if he could get that from Mephistopheles, then Mephistopheles would win. And Mephistopheles says, okay, let's go mess with some drunks and see what happens. Maybe that'll win you over. If anything, this scene demonstrates the disconnect between Faust mentality and Mephistopheles. Does Mephistopheles really understand what Faust needs and wants? It doesn't really appear so. Some of my students suggest that maybe this is a baseline. Maybe Mephistopheles is trying the lowest possible thing just to feel Faust out and see where he is before he goes on to really try to win Faust over. Or maybe it's to provide a sense of distress and contrast so that when Faust does find the true fulfillment, it'll seem that much richer. After all, if your expectations are this low, then it doesn't take too much to feel high again. We might also reference back to Mephistopheles' soliloquy in the last scene, where Mephistopheles was talking about how he completely had Faust in his grip, how Faust was really hopeless even without selling his soul to the, to the devil, and also how he was just going to drag him through shallow pleasures and see what happens. This is certainly a dragging Faust through shallow pleasures, and it's really not successful. Faust really has only two lines in this entire scene. The first one is just a greeting as he walks into the room, and the second one is, man, this really stinks, let's get out of here. Mephistopheles is like nudging him saying, hey, look how much fun they're having. Free men, you see, at play in nature's state. And Faust says, I'd like to quit their playing field. He's not enjoying this. He's not enjoying the entertainment that Mephistopheles seems to be getting out of messing with these drunk guys. He's not enjoying the kinds of pleasures that these people are steeping themselves in. It's not appealing to Faust. And yet Mephistopheles doesn't even really seem to notice that Faust is sitting over in the corner board. Mephistopheles is having way too much fun here. And instead of looking over at Faust and being like, oh, you're not having a good time, let's go try something else. He just keeps on playing around. We're going to see a tension between Faust and Mephistopheles all throughout this story. And it's probably going to escalate even more later on. The majority of the action in this scene focuses around the quartet. There are four German students who are sitting around and drinking and singing songs. Uh, they represent the different student levels. Frosch seems to be the freshman, Brander the sophomore, and Altemeyer the older student. Seibel is the owner of the establishment, and it appears early on that Frosch has stolen Seibel's girl, which makes Seibel rather angry. They sing songs about love and politics, and argue back and forth about love, until Mephistopheles and Faust walk in. And then, seeing Mephistopheles and Faust coming in, all of a sudden the four students put their differences aside and decide to sort of band together to mess with these outsiders. Mephistopheles steps into the tavern and says to Faust, my foremost duty is, you see, to show you merry company, how one may idle best and worry least. The people here make every day a feast, with comfort ample, humor stale, each spins in his constricted round, like kittens chasing their own tail, provided that their heads are sound. And while the landlord's credit holds, they are right merry and carefree souls. This is the way to have fun. Be really shallow and drunk. That doesn't sound anything like what Faust was asking for back in the last scene. He doesn't want that hollow, empty, chasing round in circles kind of action. That's what he spent his whole life doing, hollow, empty, circular action. And now he wants something meaningful and fulfilling. The students try to poke fun at Mephistopheles, but he's too quick-witted for them. And he keeps insulting them in subtle ways and insulting the wine. And then he begins to offer them some entertainment. First of all, he sings them a song, which they all join in. And then he decides to offer them drinks. 
through magic. He asks each one of them what they would like to drink, then he drills holes in the table and their own specific drinks come out. They're very impressed by this magic trick, but uh, they don't listen very carefully when he warns them not to spill the drinks, and they do, and all of a sudden flames erupt. They get more and more upset about his magic and trickery and begin to try to attack him, but he enchants them and causes them to hallucinate thinking that they're in a vineyard. They reach for clusters of grapes and instead they grab each other's noses. They suddenly realize where they are and what they've been about to do, that they've been about to cut each other's noses off, and they look around and there's Mephistopheles flying out of the tavern on a floating barrel. So much for Mephistopheles' first attempt at entertaining Faust. There's a lot of question about why Goethe would include this scene. After all, it certainly doesn't drive the action forward, except for in a negative way. It's also interesting to note that this is the first scene that's really set in a specific setting. Up till now, we've been in some sort of vague, amorphous German town, Faust study, but we don't really know where Faust study is. All of a sudden, this scene is a very specific tavern in a very specific location. Why? Cyrus Hamlin explores this idea in his interpretive notes in the Norton Critical edition of this book, and he talks about how this particular tavern was one frequented not only by the semi-historical character of Faust, but also by Goethe himself. As a student, Goethe hung out in this tavern, and he was very familiar with these big frescoes painted on the walls. The frescoes depict an episode from the original legend of Faust about Faust hanging out in this tavern and messing with drunk people. The first one shows Faust singing and dancing with the drunk people, and the second one shows him flying out on a barrel. Goethe preserves these details, but changes them up. In some ways, this scene is a nod towards the original legend of Faust, which Goethe significantly changes. But because his Faust is not the kind of person who would be singing and dancing and doing magic tricks, but because his Faust is not the kind of person who'd be singing and dancing and doing conjuring tricks in a bar, he changes it up and makes Mephistopheles the center of the action here. Mephistopheles has no qualms with very hollow, shallow entertainment, nor does he mind messing with these drunk people. But Faust in Goethe's version is much different. Things that are shallow and insignificant don't matter to him and frustrate him. He prefers something that's full of meaning and purpose. And this scene is definitely not full of meaning and purpose. In some ways, Goethe, by drawing in this original scene and changing it up so much, shows and very clearly establishes how much he has changed from the original legend, how his version is very different and very significant in different ways. He is rejecting the older ideas of a hollow Faust that's just out for pleasure and moving towards a Faust who's looking for what it truly means to be significant, to be human, which makes this an interesting scene after all. The Disney song for this scene is Gaston. No one kicks Mephisto, no one licks Mephisto in a conjuring match, no one tricks Mephisto. I'm especially good at levitating. Oh, what a guy, Mephisto! Mephisto.